Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And uh, surprise, Disney is expensive. Oh no, it's more expensive now than it's ever been. It is more expensive than it's ever been. It's also very busy. And we're gonna talk about this. Uh, Disney's, again, I mean, we've talked about this multiple times, but Disney's current business model is get as much money out of each individual park attendee as possible. Right. Uh, you know, Disney is not an affordable vacation for most people now, we but, know this. But the good news is the attendance is down a bit, 17%. The bad news is they're expecting all those people to make up the difference and then some. Yeah, so we're gonna talk about this and this has been a long time coming. They've been working toward this for at least the last decade or so. We're gonna talk about how much a Disney vacation cost even 15, 20 years ago and it's shocking how much the prices have gone mm -hmm. up. I, I, we're so used to, it's kind of like a, like a lobster being boiled. Mm. No, I don't wanna use that example because it makes it, but you Too know what I'm saying? Late. Like you don't feel that you're in the hot water until you look back and realize like, oh yeah, it's the water's boiling now. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you don't, I don't know. Anyway, bad analogy. We're gonna talk about this before you get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Uh, check out piratesandprincesses.net. That's Geeky's D objective, objective Disney theme park blog. It is. Yeah. I'm sorry, I thought this guy's name was Pussy, but it's Jacob Passy. No offense, Passy. Jacob. When I looked at it from the angle I was looking at it, I, it, it looked like another word. Anyway, uh, speaking of support here, real quick, uh, Crimson Wren, Volume 1 on Indiegogo, uh, almost $35,000. 25 days left on the clock, guys. Uh, please support this graphic novel project. It is a long book, over 130 pages. And it's and only the first half. It's only the first half. And we, if we do really well in here, that money is going right into how the artist drawing the second book. Yes. So, uh, yeah. Uh, looking forward to getting that done finally. It's only taken, you know, 10 years, mm -hmm. eight years. It almost got picked up a couple times. It did, it did. Anyway, let's let's talk about this. Speaking of money, uh, Disney's new pricing magic. This is coming from the, uh, the Wall Street Journal. Their new pricing magic, more profit from fewer park visitors. Yes, a we told you. We said this is what they want. This is literally what they want. They're trying to price people out, but the people that remain, they're going to gouge. Mm -hmm. um, they uh, I, Ideally, for Disney, if they had... 10 people in the park and all those people were shelling out a couple million dollars a day, they'd be totally fine with that. Mm -hmm. so less work for them, less staff. They don't care if you bounce your checking account, which we're going to talk about in a bit. Yeah, people are really, really stretching themselves uh, pretty thin to go to Disney. And uh, we've they, done it. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, you can't. You can't. Years quit ago, it. when our kids were little, like before we even did any of this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, we would do what we could to get the take them because they loved it so much. And sometimes it was like pushing it. Yeah, it really was. It. Really was. Like pay the mortgage this month or go to well, Disney. No, it wasn't mortgage, that. It wasn't that. We would bad. drive instead of fly or different things like that. Take food instead of dining out all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So attendance remains below pre-pandemic levels. Oh, that's not what, what Disney, Disney's like, oh, it's never been better. Uh, but Disneyland and Disney World are making more money than ever. Yep. The, the company has raised some prices and eliminated Song. or started charging for other services and features that used to be free. Pretty much anything that was free you have to pay for now, <laughs> so let's uh, be honest. Walt Disney used to call Disneyland the Magic Kingdom these days. Walt Disney Company, uh, just wait, they'll get rid of Walt, has a new magic trick, wringing every last dollar out of each visitor to its profitable theme parks. They haven't charged for the bathrooms yet. Oh, just That'd wait. be Genie Plus. You can use a Genie Plus. You pay five bucks to go to the front of the line to use the bathroom. Uh, yeah. What if What if you can't get into the bathroom without your magic band? Wouldn't that suck? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that suck? Over the past two years, uh, Disney World and Southern California's Disneyland Resort have emerged from the shadow of the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, the company has made a host of changes that have sent the cost of a visit to Disney Resort skyward. Pent up demand. For money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for, uh, on their end, yeah. The outcome is a bonanza for Disney, even as the company limits the number of visitors and keeps attendance at its U.S. theme parks below pre-pandemic levels. They're generating record sales and profits. Well, yeah, when they're charging, like, so Fast Pass Plus, you have to pay for Genie Plus, and only half the, the park visitors are using it. Mm -hmm. And it's still caught. They're still making that much money. We said this was going to happen. Um, Disney, you know, they, they've got you know, ridiculous record profits in the parks, but again, not as many people going as they were before the pandemic. We have a recession coming. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Are we allowed to say there's a recession? Well, tell people how much those little thermal detonator Cokes are. They were like she $6 or $7. One. Yeah, that's a little bottle. It's like but... an eight ounce bottle of soda. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was like, but you know, when 
it's hot and you're thirsty and it's there. If you want two, two sips of something, you can spend eight bucks for it. There you go. There you go. Um, yeah, people are, are staying longer because they're having such a good time. No, they took the, the park hopping away. They made it harder yeah. to park hop. We used to you just... You can, but it's after two o'clock and you have to... And you, you know, it costs more. It always did. Uh, well, it didn't always cost more. Back in the day, you used to be able to get tickets and you could park hop for free, but they got rid of that a long time ago. This poor cast member. You know, look like you're happy serving up Dole Whips. And they'll be melted by the time it gets it to the It's going to melt before you even get across the counter. Yeah, no, look, it's already drooping. It's already flaccid. Uh, prices on Dole Whip dessert shown here served over pineapple juice have gone up at some locations. I will give you a little hint, though. Um, actually, if one of our writers uh, does Universal a lot, John, and he said that uh, a lot of locations at Universal have the Dole Whips and they're way cheaper. I'm sure they are. Um, they have sheets. They Sheets and yeah, if you're on the East Coast, if you're in Pennsylvania, Ohio, wherever Sheets they is now, they like Carolinas now. Sheets, a lot of the Sheets actually have uh, pineapple soft serve, which is Dole Whip. It's, and of course, they don't have it anywhere near me. For, well, I guess there's one place 20 minutes away. But yeah, oh, 20 old minutes. Right? I know I have to go there now. Yeah. I don't want that. The local one doesn't. But tell you for your gas in, it's probably the same price as it is. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. Um, so the biggest change in the past two years and the most lucrative for Disney is the introduction of a smartphone app feature called Genie Plus, the most hated thing no. that they've done in recent years. It's $15 per person per day on top of a mission, which I think is bullshit. It, it, it is. However, I will tell you, we used it last time to, to, to be able to talk about it. Mm. And other than Hollywood Studios, it actually worked. I mean, it would actually worked really well. Um, it sucked that you had to pay fifteen dollars, and a lot of people don't. But if you want to get in and out and not wait in lines all day, for us, it did work. But I know what I'm doing, and I know which ones to hit first, and how to, you know, set it up so it worked really well. It might not be so much for someone who's never been, but for us, I got us right through most everything. Disney is pay to win these days. I mm -hmm. mean, it, it, you know, we've talked about it before. We had a video before talking about Genie, and we said, look, this is what it's going to do. It's basically going to make Disney pay to win. Uh, you know, you pay a hundred plus dollars per day to get into the park, but that doesn't mean you're going to be able to do everything you want to do. You might only be able to get onto a couple of rides unless you pay extra. Now, where I think it gets ridiculous is that besides Genie Plus, if you want to go straight to the front of the line on rides, you can pay even more money to do that. And I think that's going a little, I mean, I think Genie Plus is, good, is ridiculous. Why not just roll it into your park pass? But this is, you know, beyond. Yeah. I mean, look, they've been talking about this for a while. Uh, Fox hat last year, Disney is accused of tailoring offerings to wealthy families. Which we told you. Pricing out loyal customers after the COVID closures. This one's uh, a couple months ago. Disney World leans into wealthy customers. This has been going on for a while. They started during Bob Iger's reign with stupid, like the Tomorrowland uh, cabana tents mm -hmm. they had. Are they and, like $700 a day or something? Yeah, for like, it was like a freaking festival tent. It was like a wedding tent. And, and it was air conditioned and had drinks. <laughs> And you can take breaks. But that's what they want. That That's literally who they want. They want they're, wealthy Yeah. And, well, and they're talking about the things that used to be free, like parking. Parking at the hotels was free. Well, they charge you for that now. And then they got rid of the airport shuttles. Yes, no more Magic Express. Magic bands used to be included in your hotel. Yeah. When you're paying like more than like triple what it was, you know, three or like 20 years ago, double what it was 10 years ago, you'd think the Magic band would be included. It's not now. And they keep raising the prices on everything. And that's true. Um, they keep we keep jacking it up every time I turn around. There's like a snack went up a dollar. Some things have got five dollars. Yeah, and this is um. Let's let's talk about this real quick since you mentioned you know what it cost 20 years ago when we first started going to Disney World. Now I used to go to Disneyland back always, in the day. I always went to Disney World. Disneyland wasn't as expensive, but I do remember the tickets being about twenty twenty five dollars a day back in the like the late eighties early nineties, right? And that's about right. Okay, just 20 years ago. Um, 2002, uh, they talk about uh, what all years said. A single day theme park admission adult ticket was $48 and $50, while a child between three and nine cost $38 to $40. Four day park hopper option, an adult ticket costs $192 to $199 for four days, while a child would have run you $152 to $159. That sounds about right. Now, if you, if you, even if you figure inflation, it would not have even doubled. I think if you want to double something, you go back even to like the 80s or whatever, things yeah. have doubled since then. It, that would still put it way on. That would still put the cost of tickets way above 
even the double the price from that that long ago. Well, here, here are the hotels, right? So we used to stay almost exclusively at the Pop Century when we would go. Mostly down. because we, the kids liked it so much. They loved it. They loved the big, you know, cartoon characters and stuff. And it was a step above the All Stars. And I remember, you know, between what, like eighty five to one hundred and ten dollars a night was about what it was. In 2005, a stay at one of the Port Orleans moderate resorts would have cost a person $134 during value time, $149 regular time, $169 peak time, and $184 during the holidays. Uh, due to inflation, it's easy to assume that during a normal time, a stay at the Port Orleans Riverside or French Quarter would cost a person approximately $129. Um, now, <laughs> a four-night, excluding tax, four-night stay at one of the moderate Port Orleans hotel would have cost $516. It's almost that a night now, isn't it? It's like... It's high. I mean, it's not that. Is it? Oh, well, and the moderates it's pretty are pretty high. Like the moderates are high. They're like that. three, four hundred dollars a night now. Yeah, you a lot of times you can get deals. So if you look, you can get discounts and deals. But yeah, we used to be able even 10, 12 years ago, we could go to Disney World, family of four. You know, two adults, two we kids. We do like five or six days. We do five or six days, and our trip would be under. Three thousand dollars. Well, think. yeah, it wasn't bad. It wasn't that bad, and you go, you know, go back another decade or two, and it was even more reasonable than that. And it's not for everybody mm -hmm. now. I mean, look, I mean, I, I, they don't want you. We've said before, they don't want poor people even, going to the even that. Like, and even they're they're they're, they're diehards, like the annual pass holders and stuff. They're running this at Disneyland. They finally put up that they're going to renew their magic keys, but they changed them. They added more block out dates and they added, they raised the prices, of course, and then put did some changes to it. And that's only a matter of time. So they start this at Disney World too, because you know they're done well that what they're going to do is they're eventually going to you know, put block out dates on the, the, the highest and the highest tier pass, which mm -hmm. if you're not a Florida resident, you have to buy the highest yeah. tier. And it's a matter of time. So they start doing that there too, because then they, then they can, what they're doing is if you want to go to those events, like the holidays or any of that stuff, well, you have to pay full ticket on top of your annual pass. And it's absolute bullshit. So this is interesting. They used to actually, I think they used to disclose the attendance at the theme parks. They don't now. Um, so this is Disney's explanation for this. Uh, the pricing is determined by pure supply and demand. Uh -huh. No different than airplanes, hotels, or cruise ships. But then they deliberately, but then here's the thing. Is the demand real though? Because there's times when all the hotels were sold out, even when the parks had limited capacity, and there really weren't that many people there. So they were just not opening those rooms up and then saying, oh, the demand's through the roof. We can charge more for the hotels. Yeah, there's definitely, there's there's something going on here. Well, we'll, we'll read this. This I'm is sorry. interesting. Uh, in the quarter that ended January 1st, Disney's domestic parts, parks set records in both quarterly revenue and operating income, which I was shocked by. I was like, wait a minute. Uh -huh. Wait a minute. This does not make sense. Then broke both of them six months later. For the quarter that ended July 2nd, the business unit that includes theme parks also posted record revenue of $5.42 billion and record operating income of $1.65 billion. Uh, this well, is when they're charging you for everything but using the restroom. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Said uh, visitors uh, have more choice about how to spend their money. <laughs> yeah, I mean, time. They call it choice. Okay. Well, at the same time, making the parks extremely commercially successful. Basically, you have a choice. You either can have a really shitty trip and not be able to ride anything and maybe ride five rides because you're stuck in lines all day. Or you can spend more money. By, by choice, I'm putting it in quotes because that's a load of shit. You don't really have a, much of a choice. It's, it's pay to play. I mean, at this point, Disney is, and know that going into it, it's pay to play. They said that uh, the parks... Uh, attendance fell by 17% compared with the previous year, the company reported, but per capita spending right, grew by 17%. So Disney doesn't disclose attendance for its theme parks. I know when we went in... Uh, they didn't disclose a lot of things, which makes you go, hmm. Yeah. Now, I do know in July they were pretty crowded. It was it was busy, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Yeah. We got into everything we wanted to ride They talked part. Yeah, we did. Except for Hollywood. Hollywood's a nut house. Oh, it is. It is. And the funny thing is, is I don't think either of the Star Wars rides are that fantastic. No, we had people with us that hadn't ridden them yet. And so we wanted to make sure they got to ride them. Normally, if it was me, I would just go right on to like the Toy Story and all the stuff you want to do. And by the time you get to ride all that shit, everybody who just now got through Star Wars will come out into the rest of the park and then you'll have lines. But you already did everything you wanted to do. 
My my favorite Star Wars ride is Star Tours. I know. Like Star Sun likes that one too. I, I like Star Tours. I don't I don't the Falcon I thought was I never boring. Did it again. And Rise of the Resistance, I think, is massively overrated. I, it half that wasn't working. When I was there, yeah, it was on B mode and the like the, the, the late remember the guns yeah. that they would move? They weren't even moving. Oh, that's every day. It just I mean, wasn't working right. Well, you like, guys got stuck for like what now? Yeah, because it two? broke down within the first again? like twenty minutes. Again, if we hadn't done that, we'd have been ahead of it. But anyway, back to this. Yeah, so they, they said that they've drawn the ire of legacy fans, longtime Parks loyalists, yep. including the annual pass holders yep. who feel they're being pushed to the side. And they are. They are. Um, they have a love-hate relationship with the annual pass holders. It's kind of like a gym. You, know, you get your, your monthly gym members, but you're going to make more money on somebody coming in for the day. You know, But you also need the annual pass holders to... Make sure you've got a steady revenue well, they stream. They're trying to use this thing saying that, oh, well, the, the daily people will spend more at restaurants and on merch. And it's like, I know that's not true because I know a lot of pass holders just go in to go to your special events, to go to the new restaurants you open, to go buy special merchandise. They're hauling up with a bag full to put on eBay. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me that they're not buying. Uh, Len Testa, they talked about it. Um, he talked about it. Yeah, he runs touring plans. He's been tracking attendance for decades. Uh -huh. He's very knowledgeable. But uh, yeah, he said that you know, a typical annual pass holder might only ride a ride during a visit, eat an ice cream cone, walk around for a few hours, and go home, but they're taking up capacity. Well, that's true. But the thing is, I can tell you also, a lot of them just go in to buy stuff to go to the new things. Yeah. Yeah, and a, a lot of the annual pass holders are the uh, the Disney influencers too, the people that mm -hmm. are the lifestylers that move to Orlando or Anaheim just to go to the Disney theme right. parks. Right, and they actually get a lot of followers, and they actually probably sell trips for you. So you know, I don't know if I'd if I'd cut them off the knees. It's going to be like cutting off your nose to spite your face. Yep, um, they said that Disney has stopped selling nearly all new annual passes to Disneyland yeah, and Disneyland, Disney World, yeah. and has done away with a host of free perks that annual pass holders used to enjoy. I know a lot of. Diz Twitter and, and Disney Instagram influencers were flipping out because they're like, I can't afford $120, $150 a day to go to the parks. I thought, you know, my $1,000 a year or whatever it was covered everything. Yeah. You know, as many times as I wanted to go. Well, here's what I'm talking about. Existing, existing AP holders can renew their passes because right now they're not open to new people, but you can renew. Mm. Um, although they're talking about Disneyland raised theirs by 14%. And they introduce more blackout days when the pass holders can't visit. You can visit, but you have to pay full ticket price. Yeah. So there's a lot of, I mean, look, they're they're making up lost revenue. They, they've always got to, and this is, you know, any corporation, they have to every year, year over year, you have to show growth. And if people aren't going as much, how do you show growth? Well, you start charging the people that are going more money, but then it is kind of a double-edged sword because you get to a point where you start charging so much that people stop coming and then you got to charge the remaining people even more money and then they stop coming. Right. And then you have to remember too, they're charging more for food, but they're shrinking the sizes and everything else because, you know, we have to keep those fat people, you know, from eating everything. Okay. Keep going down. If you go down, they talk to some people, um, about going to the parks and this one person they're talking about this. They went to, um, go back up a little bit. They went to, she works at, I guess, a Starbucks, and that they went to their first t trip in January. Um, mm -hmm. They took their little girl, which, you know, hey, I think everybody wants to go at least once and take their kids because yeah. kids want to go. Disney makes sure your kids want to go, and they market the heck out of it during the Disney stuff they watch. Mm -hmm. um, she said the money was tight. The family spent around $5,000. It was mostly paid for by the in-laws. And they're talking about how um, they spent they both spent a bunch of uh, max up their credit cards. But they said that um, her daughter loved it. She cried. She goes, the memories are worth more than gold. Even if I did suffer overdraft fees once I got home, Disney doesn't care. No, they it's don't all care. for families. But we don't care if we bankrupt your family <laughs> as long as you give us the money. It's your fault for being poor. That's what Mickey says. Don't be poor. You know, it's not even being poor. It's being like at middle, middle class. class. It's your I fault mean, for being middle class. It's not poor. Poor people couldn't even afford, afford that. It's just, it's it's what? like the middle class people and you know people that scrape together. I've heard people be so upset because they scraped and scraped and scraped for three years to go once, and right before they went, they jacked the prices on something, and they're like, "No, I can't afford it." Yeah, I've literally seen it repeatedly. What um was it the the Galactic Star Cruiser? They're marketing the people in Golden Oaks now. Yes, Golden. Well, not Golden Oaks, but Golden Oaks and the DVC people were allowed to book 
um, for the new dates for next year for the Galactic Star Cruiser now. And then I think uh, DVCs are allowed to do it on the 29th, which is tomorrow. Annual pass people are allowed to do it on the 30th. And then on the 1st of September, it's open to general public. But they keep jacking the prices up, like the captain's table, where you could pay money to eat with the captain. Why would you pay that? I don't know. Was $30. Now it's 50 bucks a person starting next year. So yeah. they're just like, they're, they're, they're going to the Golden Oaks and the, and the, um, and the or Club 33. People first, then the D, then the, the DVC people can go the next day. This is um, this is heartbreaking, and this is why people keep going back, even though they they jack the prices up. It's nostalgia, it's memories. Mm -hmm. You know, the reason that we you know loved Disney was the nostalgia of what Disney used to be. People think we we hate Disney. We don't hate Disney. The problem is we love Disney very much, but it's not the same company mm -hmm. that it was. And uh, you know, this guy um, from California. And he's a 50-year-old, and his friend died of a heart attack in 2013. His friend was a Disney super fan, and he was an annual pass holder because he would go to the park to remember what it was like going with his friend. Mm -hmm. And uh, he actually wore a T-shirt, though. I uh, saw this. The last time, where he said, Chapek killed the magic. Chapek killed it. It's not just Chapek. It was, here's the thing. You know, like, I, I don't agree with everything Bob Chapek is doing at all. But this started on Bob Iger's watch. This absolutely – because – we were there. I was at the media events like five or six years ago when they were talking about, you know, upscale, upscale. Everything was going to be upscale. Mm -hmm. We were going to target, you know, this is the demographic. They want the Sephora moms. You know, that's that's what they're looking I for. I stuff at Sephora. Well, I know, but I'm just saying that. <laughs> like, no, no, but you can you can see that, though. You can see in how they market, you know, their Instagram and how they market the, you know, the social media influencers they, they go after. They want wine moms. They well, want wine moms. But the, the, hot, but the like, the, the, the ritzy elitist wine moms. Yeah. Who live in the fancy developments or, you know, the, the sky rises. And and they flat out said, I remember the one the one media event, and this is for Disneyland. I think it's more of a Disneyland thing than a Disney World thing. But they flat out said that they target the moms and upper class families because the mom is the one that usually makes all the travel decisions. Mom's the one who, who controls the purse strings and She controls decisions. the purse strings. And, the, you know, it is kind of, kind of sexist. We all know mom's the boss. Yeah. What? Yes, dear. Oh, oh, ask the kids. I'll tell you the bosses. But, I mean, it's all, well, it's kind of sexist, though, too. It's basically implying that mom's just sitting around not doing anything, spending hubby's money, you know, and hubby's out working hard and hubby doesn't care as long as mom's happy. You know, it's kind of like, well, yeah. Anyway. That's kind of true. I never thought about yeah. that. Yeah. You know. Like, oh, you're bored. It used to be, oh, you're a bored housewife. Watch soap operas. Now it's like, oh, you're a bored housewife. Go on to shopdisney.com right. and buy a bunch of crap. I don't know how I could be a bored housewife because I've always been busy. But anyway, but I'm not a housewife either. But you know what I mean. Anyway, the, we're going to wrap this up here in a minute. But if you go down here, that's Miss Piggy backpack. I actually caught that. When they brought her back out, I was like, wait a minute. That wasn't what she was before. It, it was 80 And then in the year, it went up to $95. Pork prices are on the rise. Yeah. <laughs> the head, the studded headband, it went up ten bucks. Um, a margarita at the t Trader Sam's Tiki Terrace went up like seventeen dollars for a damn drink. Uh -huh. Well, it's fifteen though. You can buy a bottle of not very good so, wine for less than that. Yeah, the most expensive <laughs> one day pass, one hundred and sixty bucks for one day pass. That's like that's like three times what it was. Let's go back to this article when it basically would would uh, max out at about 50 bucks. Yeah, there's no way that's keeping up with inflation. They've done many, many articles on it. We're not going to talk about it right here, but the Disney is far outpacing inflation. So you know what? Let them have it because here's the thing. They're going to be, I go have to cover stuff in my blog, but unless I have, I'm down there for a reason, I don't go there. I go Universal over. I go Universal over Disney. Yeah, I mean at this point, Universal's I, I believe the better value, but I think once Nintendo comes, uh -huh. I, I have to wonder, you know, because there's gonna be a. I, I think there's gonna be a massive, massive demand for Nintendo. Then we'll see. Well, their Express Pass over at Universal is a, is expensive compared to Genie Plus, but. Genie Plus lets you, you're limited to so many reservations at a time where they'll let you just go on yeah. whatever. So, I mean, that's, there's, you know, push and pull there a little bit. But anyway. Push and pull, yeah. Yeah, they like, to, they like to push you and they like to pull the money out of your wallet. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Um, they push you into a wall, take the money. Anyway, we're going to we're gonna wrap this one up. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.